Qualitative comparative analysis is a method of studying systematically organized data sets from qualitative data, and it's abbreviated QCA. QCA is a whole set of systematic methods for analyzing data, and the data can take the form of binary variables, which might be just coded yes and no, or ordinal or other variables, including fuzzy sets, which is one form of QCA. I have an example here to illustrate, and this example only involves 15 cases. Each case is a country, which was put onto this Venn diagram. The Venn diagram here is in rectangles because that's easier for the computer software to produce. And it reflects four conditions, which are features of these 15 countries. This diagram is from political science and history, and it tells about how democracy either broke down or survived in the period between the two world wars, the First World War and the Second World War. So for each country, either democracy did survive or it didn't survive. There were two instances where it did survive. And in the diagram, we're actually illustrating crisp sets because they either had yes or no on a series of four conditions and also on the outcome. So this is called crisp set QCA. It's illustrated here. I have a second example of another Venn diagram, and this is from the disciplines of sociology and perhaps linguistics. This paper was published by Ishida in Social Forces, and it's a diagram showing the conditions for one's identity to be accepted as Japanese. Here, one of the conditions is N, and one of the conditions is called NI. QCA can distinguish what's a sufficient condition for some outcome from what's a necessary condition for some outcome. So this diagram illustrates sufficiency of the condition for being Japanese. QCA is a formal method, and as a formal method, it uses mathematics for some of its procedures, and it offers some measurements as the outcomes. But I'm just showing simple summary diagrams here. My third diagram is also a Venn diagram, and it shows the conditions for necessity, for X to be a necessary cause of Y. Here, y is in the smaller circle, and x is the larger circle. Not x is the space out where we're outside of both the x and the y circle. So these are useful for illustrations. And this diagram comes from a book by Charles Reagan, Redesigning Social Inquiry. Finally, I have an example from my own work. And so instead of coming from the disciplines I mentioned earlier, this one comes from the sociology of development. I went to in an Indian village and interviewed women there. And the interviews included the husbands of the women, so they were three-way conversations. These were coded up as qualitative data, and we used NVivo software to work on the qualitative data, producing a casebook. The casebook is then put into a spreadsheet, which is what I'm illustrating with this diagram. Of course, you can't see the detail, but some columns are fuzzy sets, some are crisp sets, some are pseudonyms, the names of the people, and some are simply other variables. And really, the data set as a whole is a qualitative mixed methods data set. So I want to come to some conclusions. I've shown examples from several different disciplines, and QCA is suitable for mixed methods research in a number of disciplines. And it's also used heavily in comparative research, which usually involves teamwork cutting across different countries or parts of the world. These are very ambitious research projects, but even for someone with a small-scale research project, the method is very usable because it only involves about eight cases to 30 cases to 200 cases. One doesn't have to have large numbers of cases. The interesting thing is how the method analyzes the cases. It goes down to subgroups within them and makes general statements about causality within the subgroups. It doesn't attempt to do statistical inference outside of these subgroups. So when I review the advantages of QCA, I notice that it's systematic, it's qualitative, it helps mixed methods researchers to do rigorous research, and it's also quite useful across disciplines and when there's multidisciplinary research going on, where some part of the research should be measured very carefully, and some part of it is very fuzzy and policy-based or historical, and somehow inherently qualitative.
So I'm very pleased to have introduced QCA to you. It's a configurational analysis method. A configuration is a set of characteristics of the cases that you're studying. I'm quite happy to be working at the University of Manchester and using QCA. At the postgraduate level, we have a lot of students who are crossing disciplinary boundaries, and they're the ones who are finding this a useful method. Also, in the undergraduate programs, we're very ambitious, and we have students coming in with high levels of skills, even as they enter the university. So it's feasible for them to try new things which aren't taught in the earlier syllabuses of schools. QCA is a relatively new method. It's been developed since about 1995 or 2000, and now we have highly developed computer software, which is very cheap. To, to run QCA. In fact, most of the software is freeware, which you can get on the internet. So I hope you've enjoyed my introduction to QCA.